very long time. Um, any questions? Deb. Oh, uh, Olaf's got the microphone. I'm back. Hi. We'll have your question later. We look forward to it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, I was, is it is it, it is it something I yes. said? All right. Uh, can I, do you want me to start right off? Yeah, go on. Okay, uh, I'm going to. I'm Thomas Oral. I'm the director of the Integrated Taxonomic Information System in Washington D.C. at the Smithsonian. Uh, ITIS is a global initiative that provides authoritative taxonomic information for species and their hierarchical classifications. We have over a million names with our mission is really to communicate taxonomy so that it can be used by any endeavor that needs to connect taxonomy to it. Uh, and ITIS is the de facto authority for taxonomy for the US government. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> I'm going to tell you about our, uh, our, my slides are all compressed, interesting, uh, about the process that we have been uh, developed in ITIS. ITIS uh, has been doing this since 1996, and we've developed uh, quite an extensive process for quality assurance and quality control. Much of it is like what one would think about uh, in the manuscript publication process. So uh, those of you that have got, had to go through editorial uh, edits and reviews and, and revisions and galleys and all of that. That's sort of the similar process we've used in building taxonomies. Next slide, please. I'd like to say that we break our, uh, our, our quality assurance and quality control into nine steps. Uh, the first and most important uh, would be the, the people. Next slide, please. At the ITIS directorate in DC, we have a staff of uh, taxonomists and data specialists uh, uh, that work directly with uh, some IT specialists that are hosted in uh, Denver, Colorado that, that maintain the infrastructure that is found online. So ITIS has been an online data source uh, for over almost 24 years right now. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, it's a little bit longer than that. Uh, but I would say that uh, the most important part of the entire process are our taxonomic experts. These are people like some many of the curators at Natural History where I work and uh, taxonomic experts around the world. So thinking about the people, that's really the most important part of the whole process. Next slide, please. Then, as I said, ITIS is set up much like a uh, manuscript process. So we go through these, when we identify data that, that needs to be updated in ITIS, we usually do it based on a taxonomic group. So that would uh, have initial data edits, whether it's a new data source or uh, we're developing this from the literature, we would basically figure out the groups and gather all the literature we can and then start to compile uh, these things from scratch. Uh, they would be submitted once we feel like we've got a completed uh, uh, source and that source may actually come from a, a data steward. Uh, they might submit it in a CSV or some other format. Uh, we would then start a proofing process. It would get proofed. It would get sent back to the original source for edits. It would get proofed again, sent back to the original source for edits. Uh, it would go through a, a, a bunch of preload checks and then submit it as a load candidate. So think about that as, hey, we've got the galleys back and we're about to print this thing and make it available online. The next really important thing that we do is really baked into the ITIS mentality and framework are rules. Uh, next slide, please. So the, we've built a number of rules that, that we really, this goes back to a taxonomic working group that 
was made of taxonomists that actually came up with the whole idea of itis that said, hey, these are the most important rules that we should have. So from the beginning, itis data has been persistent. Uh, it is within the system is unique uh, and is always resolvable. Resolvable. So if we change something or we uh, make an edit, we don't we don't break the, the 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 connections, and that's really important for people that want to use our data in a data source. Uh, our data is available uh, as monthly database downloads, so it's we put it in multiple formats, and people build this into the back ends of their systems. So it's really important that it's it's uh, persistent and resolvable. The other thing that we use, next slide please, are standards. And these standards uh, bridge all of the, the seven kingdoms that we look at, uh, and they include uh, uh, everything one can think of from the, from the nomenclatural side, and we've baked those into uh, our software. So right now, one of the things just to keep in mind that we are using software that is very, very old. It's actually, uh, was been hobbling, cobbling along since uh, kind of the late 90s. Uh, it's, it, it works well, but uh, it doesn't really allow for uh, a more modern approach to, uh, you know, uh, global editing of taxonomy. It's really something that we use in-house. And that's uh, something at the second half of this talk, I'm going to tell you where we're going with that. But the standards are built into uh, these you know, the rules of taxonomy. And that that is the other part of, of really quality control. The other thing we do is automation. Next slide, please. So uh, we have, uh, oh, this is still another, uh, the, there we go, uh, excuse me. The automation uh, in the current software, we have 135 uh, scripts that we run against the data to look for every sort of possible uh, thing that one could think about that you can compare electronically, like, you know, parenthetical that shouldn't be parenthetical or, uh, a, you know, a, a species that is, or, or a species that isn't connected to a genus or, or something that really stands out that we could figure out with some automated process. And these are applied to every single data uh, source that we use. The next uh, slide, please. We also have 16 preload checks that we use. Uh, that's okay. We have 16 preload checks that we use uh, that are part of the um, uh, just for structural and other types of errors. And with everything we do, we have tracking sheets. And this is still sort of a manual process where we record who's doing what and it follows the data as it moves along through the process. Lastly, we have assurance. And that's the, uh, well, it's not last, but it's one of the most important of the near final steps. And that's the next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, our data development coordinator, Dave Nicholson, who many of you probably know, but uh, he does, uh, and, and his team in Denver actually do a lot of comparison of the data before it goes live, uh, and they're able to catch all sorts of fun and, and interesting things that happen in data merging and, and, and data uh, through the audit trail. Lastly, we have, next slide, the publication process where the data goes live into the database and can be queried online and becomes part of our monthly data load. And then finally, part of the QAQC is feedback. We take feedback uh, through, uh, through email and, and other ways through our uh, data portal uh, for any time people find an error or uh, have additions or other things that we want to use. So. Really, we apply all of those nine steps to every data source that we look at. Uh, next slide, please. You can probably skip ahead, too. Next slide. So what I said is we're actually moving into a more modern process. So we are, we're building a, uh, a very comprehensive online system, which 
takes all of those nine steps and, and actually puts it into a system that will be available online. It is currently in beta testing right now. We have been doing some exclusive, uh, uh, exhaustive testing in-house, uh, and we have brought in some, uh, you know, trusted people that are, are that you know we we think might want to work with us, and they're testing it. Next slide, please. But it uses a, a modern data stack, uh, which uh, makes it you know uh, both safe, but also allows us a, a lot of flexibility in the process. The idea here is that uh, when when Olaf showed uh, his the pipeline from from uh, right to left on my screen, or that's left to right on, on my screen. Uh, there are certain uh, endeavors like ITIS, like Taxon Works, like Worms, uh, and, and, and others, uh, you know, World Flora, you know, Q, I, I think that have, uh, they have their own workbenches. And the idea is that, yes, we can use simple CSVs and, and other ways of getting data in, but we're also allowing data to come in directly through these big initiatives like IDIS into the checklist bank, which assures, and that goes back to, I think, Nikki, who asked, uh, what is the, I th I'm not sure exactly who asked that, what is the, the longevity here? Like if, if a data set is going to be uh, abandoned, it could come into one of the bigger initiatives and live uh, in perpetuity, which would be, you know, we encourage people to do. So if if they want to take their data and just put it into ITIS, then we're we're gonna we're gonna be, become the stewards of those data, and they no longer need to worry about it. Now they can add to it, but they don't really need to worry about maintaining it. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a fully functional system with uh, all sorts of roles and responsibilities where you have uh, people that can do editing, people that can do oversight, people that can do, uh, you know, create accounts and everything one would imagine in a system like this. Next slide, please. And we, what we would allow are people to prune out parts of the taxonomy and create a project. Uh, that project would be locked to a, either an individual or a group of, of, of editors at the time. Uh, it would be really hard to have uh, something that's a live system with many people uh, competing to work on the same project in different projects. It just uh, would be an auditing nightmare. So we, we took the paradigm that if somebody has it locked, it's locked. And when they put it back in, somebody else can pull it back out. Next slide, please. And in the system, you have you have projects that you're part of. Uh, we have oversight of those projects. We can add people to those projects. We can control the projects. We can see where the projects are in the in the editorial process. Next slide, please. But it does have uh, a comprehensive ability to build uh, a uh, a, a nice uh, tree that that is uh, prunable that we can work through that we can then add data on the many tabs following the itis standard itis itself is a standard for taxonomy so it's kind of nice that we can apply our standards within this system next slide please And ultimately, what we're looking at is the ability to import, merge, and compare projects. Uh, so if we have a current data source and we want to pull in a new data source, we can compare them, we can merge them, we can look for the outliers, we can update taxonomy. Uh, I think I think one of the projects we're working on right now are fishes. And say I want to pull in uh, the sparrows, I can compare where the sparrows are now with a new data set. Look for the look for the 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 uh, overlap and then look for the outliers and then start to, to work those into the process. Uh, next, please. And we've built in all of those really neat uh, proofing tools that we had. So they work on the fly. They're either going to um, give you uh, the inability to do a mistake as you're, as you're typing it, which is nice, uh, or it's going to help guide you into the right process but it, it will also allow you to run a number of uh, 
uh, in-depth proofing tools to make sure that the data conforms to the data standards. So what we're looking at here is that quality control across the whole process, as opposed to maybe just having it as part of any individual process. It's, it's really baked into the whole process. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's nice that these data will then be able to export into our main data system, uh, and this that connection will be made. That's currently uh, in the process. So because we're in beta, we're not actually pushing it into production, but we will be doing that once we flip the switch. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, I can slide over this one and go to the next slide just for time. One of the things we have are some extensive statistics where we can actually look at what we're doing, where you can see where projects are and the process. We can see where uh, where we have, you know, global taxonomic treatments, where we're missing data, where some of the data may be uh, in a lower state of uh, editing versus other parts. Uh, so that's that's built into our standards where we have, hey, yeah, we we are we are fully able to account for this species nomenclaturally, or there is some real question about this, and we're going to need to do a little bit of work. So we can we can actually apply different standards to different levels of our data. But the idea is that when we're done with a data edit, it's it's a snapshot of where taxonomy is uh, in that particular time. And it may delta from you know current literature, and then we have to go back and start that process all over again to update it. So it's really an ongoing uh, living battle to uh, keep these things updated. But I like to think that you know what we're doing is is, is very high quality. We're looking at the the base, uh, in many cases, the base literature, and we're making a lot of data calls that uh, maybe uh, others don't catch. Uh, next slide, please. And I think really there's not too much else I could say, uh, but the, the workbench, I hope to have rolled out this coming uh, calendar, uh, next calendar year, uh, and then invite uh, taxonomists to come in as they'd like to be part of the ITIS uh, team. Uh, one can think about this as what's maybe been happening in uh, taxon works or in worms, but it's, it's, it's not, it's it's much more constrained to taxonomy. I mean, we don't we don't really we're not in the business of doing anything other than taxonomy. That's everything we do. And I think I will finish there. And I appreciate your time. And uh, if there's time for questions, uh, I can take them later. I guess Donald. Uh, no, thanks very much, Thomas. Um, I I think uh, the key thing is for us to keep moving at this point. Uh, if anybody does have questions, uh, particularly about the upcoming workbench tool, uh, please do post them online uh, in the yeah, you know in the questions section, uh, and we'll make sure that they get to the speakers concerned. Uh, the next presentation is from Colin Lynn, uh, who I'm glad to see in the room, and um, he's. Uh,